another episode of Entrepreneurs of Fuego. We're documenting the journey of incredible entrepreneurs, artists. And you know, we've had professional athletes, we have artists, we have uh, photographers, we have filmographers. And you kind of fit the filmography, the photographer type of category, I would imagine. Well, yes, I love film. Uh, I love meeting you. I love <laughs> being in this office with Bro. all these great people. <laughs> Um, Brian Thomas, and I'm not going to butcher your last name, Bukovic. No, Bukovic. You said it good. Yeah, yeah. Brian Thomas Bukovic. Brian yeah. Thomas Bukovic. So I go by Brian Thomas um, for the people that don't do good with pronunciations. But, um, you know, uh, what I love about film is it started with this little seed when I was younger and I was dancing in front of my big window in a diaper <laughs> to Michael Jackson and I saw my reflection. I thought, I could be Michael Jackson. You know, and then my mom pulls up. How, how old were you? I was, I, I have no idea, you know. But you were, you were young enough to be conscious about your reflection and the fact that you could be somebody else. Yes, yes, and, and then, uh, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a long journey, and so that was just the beginning. Um, but that seed had been planted that I wanted to entertain people, and it started with entertaining myself. How old were you when you realized, well, maybe Michael Jackson is in the stratosphere, and maybe I don't... I don't well, it was right after the diaper incident. <laughs> <laughs> it was that moment of clarity and then moment of reflection. I'm not going to be Michael Jackson. But I could be behind the camera. But I could be somebody important, you there know. You cool. and, uh, and I know it's going to take a lot of work and there's going to be a, mountains to climb and then mountains to repel. Uh, and, and that's essentially what I've been doing since I've been alive. I've been doing good things and and then uh, and then moving on to other things and and I tried I love film I try to help businesses as much as I can I was raised in a good strong hard-working family right. and and my family owns a, a their own business the butcher shop so my my dad my dad father's a butcher and I worked there for uh, a lot of my young years and, and and through college and you know on weekends and and still did the, the film thing on the sidelines and then had to get a job and went to corporate America and did my thing with sales and marketing and, and consulting and, and made a little bit of money to where I could invest it in myself. And so I get a call the next day and uh, I'm, I'm, I needed maybe another year to get a little bit more money to save up to make my own production. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Um, so, but, but you knew deep inside, though, that you had some I kind of talent. I knew this urge and this talent and, and all these things were needed to, to come out that in a way. That needed to come out. And, and, that's, and, and the reason that I point that out is because that's the essence of entrepreneurship, right? You know you have something. You don't know exactly what it is, but you have something that needs to come out. And that's where we find you right now. So continue with the story. And then how, how do we get it out? Right. And, and so... Um, so I was in, I was in, you know, I was doing my job and I show up the next day and, and I get a, a call from my manager. Hey, this is your last day. You're gone. We're, we're canceling out all of our sales and marketing. So I'm driving home and, and it hits me. I, I live close to home about five minutes. Half of the way home, it hits me. I start bawling, crying. What the heck am I going to do with my life? And then I thought, you know, how am I going to pay my bills, my income, you know, and, and, then, and then I had this, and so I had to pull over into, uh, into a parking lot, and, and then I, I'm looking at myself in the rear view mirror, I'm sniffling, and what am I doing? And, and then I have this moment where I was so excited because that happened for a reason to put me on, back on my path. And maybe a scene from Clerks probably popped <laughs> in, your, in your mind, right? And that's a great film, by the way. It yeah. is an incredible um. film. <laughs> and, and so, so let's fast forward a little bit, and, and let's talk about what you're doing right now, because the, okay. there, there, is, there is a certain power to storytelling, right? Yep. And to assist the storyteller, you have to have a great vehicle, somebody that is going to capture that story. The camera doesn't lie. Exactly. That's what's so cool. I mean, it's, it's incredible. A lot of people, you know, try to fake it and try to do this and try to pretend to be something that they're not. The camera doesn't lie. And so what you do is you help people tell their stories. I do, and, and I, love, I love hearing other people's stories, and I right. love sharing stories, and, and I love getting to know people. You know, in one of my jobs, I was highly analytical, and, and that's where I, I work with the analytical side of my brain and the creative side of my brain to try to figure out how to balance everything correctly. And so, um, oh, wow, uh, we were talking about... Um, 
Oh, I had my, I, I lost my train of thought right now. That's right. I've you were so in the parking ideas. lot, you were crying, you were, you were Oh, yeah, so I had this moment of reflection. Want, and reflection, and now? Yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. I get back on, on the road, uh, and so I go home, and I happen to run into this lady who, who wants me to go to a charity event. I think, oh, this is my first big break. <laughs> Happened right away. So I go to this charity event. Well, it benefited a good cause. We raised a lot of money. But the catch was I was auctioned off to a lot of hungry women in the crowd. And that <laughs> felt so awkward. <laughs> so fast. Like, like for a day? Do you have to go out with, uh, yeah. for a date so and stuff they, like they that? Yeah, so they contribute money to, to the, the, the benefit, the, 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 the and did charity. You, did you have to get on the catwalk and here is <laughs> oh, Brian? Oh, yeah, we had to and, our stuff. And the, bid, the bidding starts at $100 or whatever, so, and then you know, it goes up from there? There was fil filet mignon up there. I was a little <laughs> pork chop. And... Uh, <laughs> And actually, I, I, I came in last place. And, and, oh, and so, you know. That, that doesn't do, I mean, that doesn't. So that, I was that, riding it high, and then I, that, I crashed, right, you know. So and, confident, like, oh, son of a. And so, but, but what <laughs> happened with that experience is I, another guy who made a little bit more money than me um, was a producer. And we decided to team up, and we created a YouTube show, did it for a couple of years. And we had so much fun with it, we forgot that, hey, we need to make a business out of this right. because sometimes you get so caught up in. Oh, um, I was being, I was the writer and the host. He was the editor and the producer, and so you know, it eventually you come to a point where, okay, well, things need to to move forward and progress in a way, and, and that's where you entrepreneurs have, have that hard time. Right, you have the two creative minds, but you don't have the business mind to say, all right, so now we need to monetize this. We got all this content. Now, what are we going to do with it? Yeah, and that is that is really the paradox that exists for entrepreneurs, right? I mean, we have these great ideas, we work for it for a long time, but how do we make it? How do we make it go? How do we make it work? T tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing right now. And, and as okay. an entrepreneur, where is that you would want to be? Where, where, where do you see yourself? Oh, that's a great question. I see myself all over the place. <laughs> uh, what I do is Well, you're I, a great storyteller. I throw out these pipe dreams, and, and they're to the sun. And if I make it to the moon, I'm doing good. If I just jump off the ground, I'm doing really good because that's the first step. And if you hit start, then it's and and it's so okay too. Um, and sometimes you're gonna fall. Um, but what makes it really cool is is the fact that you know it's it's not real life, but it's real life. I mean, you got all these things at play, and you got to juggle and figure out how to do the best with what you have. And with a limited time and, and limited funds and limited, so what I love to tell people is, do what you can with what you have, and then people see that, and then they see potential in you, and you just keep going on this path, and, and by the time you get there, it's it's um, it's happening, and then you're on to another dream. So I, I ended up uh, working on my first feature film. In January, I got a call from a producer. I was on vacation in, in Ohio visiting family. I was there for two and a half weeks. I was well, who vacations in Ohio? Nobody goes. <laughs> I could hear. I, I was on vacation. I'm glad you Hawaii. said Hawaii. I was in Florida. I'm vacationing. In Ohio. I think that we're going to edit that part of the interview because I don't think you wanted a lot of people to know that you were vacationing in Ohio. Anyway, so go well, ahead. Well, I don't let a lot of people know where I am <laughs> any day of the week. Um, you get called for for and you're doing your your first big film. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm there visiting family, and I get a call, and my contacts are running out. I want to go home. I just want to come back to Arizona and just relax. And I get a call from a producer friend, and he says, hey, I'm doing scouting in Kentucky. Meet me down there. I just you know, got my flight home. So I changed the flight, ran the car, went down there, met with John Voigt, who was the main lead in, in this film we were doing, and uh, auditioned for the film, didn't get the role was real pissed and bitter <laughs> and then uh, I thought well I still want to help out on the production you so I ended up void. yeah I ended up and I you know I, I spent a few days with him while he was getting into character and and he helped me do that because I like acting I to act is to be and and you know I love being different people I love people I love figuring out why people do what they do and 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 what their motivations are and what their intentions are and, and what intrigues them. That helps me understand how to better communicate a story. To pay the bills, you have a, a nice model. So you, you help uh, businesses tell their story through video, through video production. What, what is, what, where are you concentrating your efforts right now? 
Well, okay, so my next steps are to help others produce films, okay. um, to produce my own films, uh, to continue to help others connect and collaborate with each other. And I think that's, you know, it's hard to make money at something when I like you, I like what you're doing. You have a problem, though. And I know a guy who can solve that problem. He solves these problems really well. I'm going to connect you guys. Do I take a cut? No, I, I feel that's my need as a leader to help develop the people um, in a way that I can, I, can, I can lend knowledge or any experience that I've been through. Um, and so how do I make money? Well, that's a great question. I have a pursuit of knowledge versus the pursuit of money, power, and fame. And I think if everybody were to focus on learning more, you know, I looked up a high school entrance exam from the 1900s. Yeah. Most of the people, most of the adults today in corporate America, CEOs would not be able to answer 50% of those questions, and and and, and, and it's it's just what's what's happened. I'm I'm interested in a lot of things. So one of my goals is to go to Tokyo in 2020 for the Olympics. I'm a big rock climber. Sport climbing is is introduced in the Olympics. That's one of those pipe dreams that hey, if if I get to be a trainer or a supporter, I'm there. If I get to be a, uh, a, a somebody in the stands, I I, I did something. It sounds to know. me like you are Mr. Wolf from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> it sounds to me like you solve a lot of people's problems, <laughs> and then you connect kind of people like that. But I, but, you know, that's just a little well. I, I I like Mr. Wolf, and he's a great guy, and. And he, great character. And great character and everything else. And I know some people in real life that may be Mr. Wolf. <laughs> Mr. Wolf. But <laughs> your uh, favorite filmographer? Wow. Um, Michael Givens. I like this guy named Michael Givens. And it's not a household name. No, no. He, he's he's kind of under the radar, but he's been in the industry for years. And, and he he's one of the guys who, you know... I come on a set and we're in a scouting van, a little sprinter van, and I'm in the back back and, and he's next to me and I have no idea who, who he is. He has no idea who I am. Well, he ends up, he, he's an executive producer, you know, and, and, a, and a cinematographer, director of photography. I mean, he's, he's done it all. And he looks at me, he's like, who the hell are you? <laughs> I go, I'm here helping doing this movie. My name is Brian Thomas Bukovic and let's do it, you know? And so he was all about it. and. And we, we had this great connection and um, just seeing them do their work. The, 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 the cast of these movies get a lot of credit. The crews get a lot of credit, but the crews, um, the grip and electric, the wardrobe, hair, makeup, uh, production, first unit, second unit, all these guys make up such a dynamic team and, and it's so incredible to be in their presence when, when all the stuff is happening. Uh, being on a film set is like a tornado, a tsunami, a flash flood, a hurricane all coming together and you've got to innovate and adapt and be flexible and, and, and not lose your cool and, and just continue towards one mission and, and that's what's so cool. When I, when I talk to you I have to follow like about five or six different stories. So you well, because they, they, they're you, you all think, over the place. You, really, you think I pentagonally, mean, yeah. And by that I mean that's cool because you have that ability. And so I'm gonna finish by asking you, what's the last movie you watched? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and it's probably not Sixteen Candles. Well, if it was, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> Actually, the 80s movies are coming back, and we... we they are. Um, I just read a script, which they're they just produced. It's called Permanent, and, and, and it's a good film. Rain Wilson, Patricia Arquette, and a lot of other good stars are in it. But um, the last film I watched, Blue Ruin. It's an, it's an indie film. It's a thriller. The budget was just under 500K, you know, half a million dollars. They made a million dollars on the, on the first opening weekend, but they had mil or millions of dollars in sweat equity on that cast and crew. And that's what makes the difference, is those people coming together and making a badass film for people for years to come. And, and, and so... I have, I have a feeling that we haven't seen the last of you. In oh, fact, no. that this is, this is the beginning. I mean, you're, you're one determined son of a gun, man. I mean, I appreciate that. And it's that's so what, good to be here. That, and that's Francisco, what, thank you. <laughs> that's what entrepreneurship is all about, man. And I really respect what you do and how you think and how spatially you are. I say that with a compliment. 
And I take that as a compliment because a lot of people look at me pretty crazy. No, it, it's very hard to think in five dimensions, and you do that. And this is what the weird part about it is that I'm following you. But I, 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 I like that about you. Take us out. All right, thank you. I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're out.